For me, the economics of happiness is the economics of localization. It's about strengthening local economies worldwide. And this is in order to restore and rebuild our deeper connections to one another and to nature. This is proving itself to be the way to restore both human and ecological well-being because it's a path, it's an economic path that respects and restores the diversity of the living world, that respects cultural diversity. And it really is a magical win-win formula that restores our well-being. I would say that the biggest problem we face today is our lack of awareness about how an economic system that started a long, long time ago, rooted in genocide, violence, slavery, has continued to expand into a global economy where we have blindly allowed global traders, global banks, and global corporations to become a de facto interlinked government that is systematically threatening any form of democracy and threatening Gaia herself. What's really good news about this is that this is not a consequence of some kind of innate greed and nastiness deep in human nature. This is not about human nature. It's actually about a system that has become so big that it's inhuman. It's of an inhuman scale. And for that reason, most of us have not understood how we've ended up enslaved to this system and how it's ended up being a situation where big money is funding the big ideas, and the big ideas are about imposing a consumer monoculture on the world that threatens identity, threatens livelihoods. When you do that to men, especially, it leads to violence. And the violence can be turned against children and women or against yourself. It's turned against the other. Fundamentalism, ethnic friction is growing as a consequence of this system. It's also a system that drives up CO2 emissions massively and unnecessarily because we have redundant trade. Countries are importing and exporting the same products. To change this system is not as difficult as we think. The most important ingredient is awareness. We need the big picture to understand why we seem today to be overwhelmed by crises. And sadly, many people respond by thinking, oh, humanity deserves to extinguish itself. No, humanity consists of people who long for connection, who long for love, who want peaceful collaboration. It is only when we're pitted against each other by a blind, inhuman system that we end up stupid and angry. Once we're allowed to collaborate through strengthening local economies, we can see how this turns around our environmental problems as well as our multiple psychological and social problems. The solution to a lack of awareness is spreading awareness. So this is why what what I call big picture activism is what is urgently needed. We need to invest more of our resources, more of our time into spelling out for people that the problem is not the other. The problem is not your unwillingness to reduce your ecological footprint. The problem is a system that imprisons us in consumerism. So we need to look at systemic change and we need to spread the big picture to show how systemic change is not only possible, but how we actually have at the local level worldwide many initiatives that demonstrate that we can restore the health of ecosystems, we can restore a sense of well-being through building community and connection. So spreading the word is the main aspect of solving the crisis that, that face us.